of the Minnehaha County Planning Commission and we'll begin with a few introductory comments. The County Planning Commission will first take action on the consent agenda. Following action on the consent agenda, the County Planning Commission will continue with the regular agenda items. As a courtesy to everyone uh, here tonight, make sure that your cell phones are turned off. Any final action taken on a conditional use permit request will take effect five working days following this meeting and a lesson a written appeal well, the Planning Commission's decision is filed in the Planning Office by November 2nd at 5 p.m. In the event of an appeal, the decision will be referred to the County Commission for a hearing on November 17th on or after 9 a.m. Any final action taken on the rezoning application tonight will be referred to the County Commission for a public hearing on November 24th at or after 9 a.m. Meetings of the County Commission are held in this same room. At this time, the Planning Commission will consider the consent agenda. Now, prior to um, us uh, discussing that, Scott has informed me that item number two uh, needs to be deferred for one month, so that would be the action we'd be taking on the consent agenda there is deferring item number two. They failed to meet their notification requirements. Okay. So the minutes from the September 28th meeting are included as part of the consent agenda. Are there any objections from the Planning Commission members to any item listed on the consent agenda. I'm not objecting, but I wonder about item three. Would you prefer that move to the regular agenda? Why don't we just do that? Two, uh, I mean, what are they having? You know, bobcats and bison? Or? Let's move that to the regular agenda then, just to be safe in a moment. It's not like we have a long one tonight, right? Right. Okay. So the consent agenda consists of items one and two. Next, I'll uh, read those items. Uh, the first one is the approval of minutes of the September 28th meeting as item number two, which is a deferral of conditional use permit 15-64 uh, to transfer one building eligibility, and that is uh, located approximately three miles southwest of Garrison. Does anyone here have objections to the consent agenda? All right, at that point, I'd like to move for approval. Second. Motion and second to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Same sign. Then I believe we need a motion to approve the regular agenda, which would now include items three and four. So moved. Second. Motion and second on the regular agenda. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those same sign. So we have a regular agenda. And uh, for the regular agenda, we'll follow our normal hearing procedure by requesting planning staff to present a report on each item and then request the petitioner to come to the podium and make a statement uh, and or answer questions. Uh, anyone from the audience wishing to address the item shall be recognized by the chair, move to the podium, and state their name and address for the record. The planning commission will then discuss the matter and take appropriate <laughs> action. So item number three, David, are you uh, the staff person on that one then? Okay, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, are they here? No. No. I don't know if they are. Doesn't look like it. Go ahead, David. David, I know the planning department. Um, item number two, which is now item number three on the agenda, on the regular agenda is an agricultural tourism per permit. It's actually a two-part permit because um, during the vicinity as you see here, there's um, as you see here, there's more than four lots that are under 40 acres, so they have to submit a um, they want to build a 2,100 square foot pole barn um, to contain a farm-related gathering space for birthday parties and also have a, a petting zoo attached to that. Um, so that's the the two parts of the the request. Um, one is the agricultural tourism permit, and one, the other one is requesting the larger building size, just in this area being under 40 acres for the total parcel size. Um, petitioner verbally described this, as I mentioned, um, mainly to be birthday type gatherings um, where activities are centered around agriculture and small pegs type animals. Um, the building will have its own bathroom and, and septic system. Um, and the parking area, skip forward here to go past the building sizes. Um, I didn't want to touch too much on this because most of the building sizes in the area are either about the same size or a little bit larger um, than the petitioner's requested size of 1,620. They do have an existing pole shed on, on that property, um, or existing shed that's about 500 square feet. 
that wasn't included initially in the, the application, but is now included in the requested size. Um, forward here, this is the petitioner's property right here, the main property. Um, this is where that requested building size would go and the, the farm-related gathering space and um, where the activities would take place. Um, just moving through some of the more pictures of the, um, where the barn would be located. You know, that shed is in the background, um, about five, 400, 500 square feet. Um, more pictures looking west of the property. Um, looks like some of the items that is a part of the petitioner's business um, that would be potentially be, that would probably be used for the farm related gatherings. And um, it looks like a looks like a caboose to me. Um, so it, it may be used for just the cutting zoo type operation, just the birthday party aspect of that. Um, this is the view on the road there, 253rd Street, um, which is a gravel road, and then looking back to, to the east. Um, as you can see that the, the petitioner owns pasture back there, which they, in total, they own 12 acres. Um, so the original parcel is about four acres, and the rest they own over 10 acres for um, the entire thing put together. Um, these are just some of the pictures of the building sizes in the area. Um, see a look, uh, comparable to the petitioner's requested size. Um, more buildings. Another building with the um, looks a little bit larger. Sometimes. So that little the white circle just appeared on, on its own. That yeah. appeared out of the win or the car window. Um, <laughs> I think it's coming. So Scott, did everybody get notified on this one? All the neighbors? Yeah. Okay. They brought in their notification that they sent out the letters. As you can see on the site plan here, the um, the parking is included, as I mentioned, in the staff report um, along the road there, okay, right here, and then the proposed building would be back to the north of that. As you can see the white dot right there. Um, just you going through out, some of the. Would you point out their house roof? Is that right? By the roof spot. That's it. And that's the driveway they'll use yeah. then? So the driveway would be right here where those pictures were taken. Um, you saw that, that open lot right there. And then farther back in the distance, which the building actually would sit on the other parcel, so the larger um, acreage back there not the, the one that the house is on. It's just a little small, little square there. Um, just going through some of the criteria that um, we take into account with conditional use permits. Um, the effect upon the use and enjoyment of other property in the surrounding area if use is already permitted and upon property values within the surrounding area. Um, from the map, you can see that there's a few residential acreages in the immediate vicinity, but the land around it is primarily agricultural and pasture land. Um, so the construction is 1,620 square foot building and the proposed use as a farm experience operation will likely not detract from the uses that are already permitted in the surrounding area or have an impact on property values. Two, the effect upon normal and orderly development and improvement of surrounding vacant property for uses predominant in the area. The development of the approximately 12 acre parcel as a farm experience operation will blend with will blend well with the existing agricultural operations and residential acreages. Um, future development will not likely significantly change um, with the construction of a 1,620 square foot full barn and a farm experience operation other than um, slight residential growth in the area, which is entirely determined by the number of available building eligibilities. Um, Petitioner has all the, the needed infrastructure in place. The, the driveway comes between the house and the proposed parking area that's 
look at it near the road and um, looks like it's adequate to account for about 16 spaces. Um, as I mentioned, by the zoning ordinance would allow um, this to be in a recreation type category. So it'd be one parking space per 100 square feet of the building, um, of usable building space, which would be equate to about 16 spaces, um, the 1,600 square feet. Um, and according to this, it looks like they have plenty of room for, to accommodate that. Five, the measures are taken to control offensive odor, fumes, dust, noise, vibration, and lighting, inclusive of lighted signs, so that none of these will constitute a nuisance. No offensive nuisances shall be permitted at any time use of the petting zoo and farm related gathering space. The use of lighting should be directed downward in order to prevent lights um, pollution off site. Um, health, safety, general welfare of the public and the comprehensive plan. The presence of an agricultural tourism use such as a petting zoo and farm related gathering space will likely not have an effect on the health, safety, and general welfare of the public due to what's already present in the area um, agriculturally oriented uses. Um, Certain types of act tourism permits, including farm-related farm -related activities, allow special events, which I believe that the petitioner is requesting to allow up to 50 people at the site for birthday parties, um, if you will. Special events may bring in large amounts of people, traffic, and potential noise to the area, so any special events should meet the criteria in um, the agricultural tourism section. Um, staff finds that the proposed use is consistent with the intent of the agricultural tourism ordinance. It conforms to the goals and policies of the Envision 2035 Comprehensive Plan. Staff recommends approval of Ag Tourism Permit 1502 to allow farm experience operation with the following conditions. Um, that the total accessory building square footage shall not exceed 2,100 square feet. Two, the farm experience operation shall be secondary to the principal use of the property as residential. The residential use ceases, the farm experience shall cease. Three, the owner or occupant of the dwelling shall be engaged in the farm experience operation occupation. The farm experience operation shall be limited to two full-time non-resident employees, not to exceed four full-time employees on site. The total signage for the operation shall meet the conditions in Article 12.13 ENF of the revised zoning ordinance for Minnehaha County. Five, the prior to any special event or festival, the applicant shall follow the provisions of the ordinance in section agricultural tourism section 12.13 g of the ordinance six that all outside lighting shall be of a style that directs light downward and preventing spillage onto adjacent properties seven that the petting zoo shall be considered an accessory used to the farm experience operation the applicant shall maintain a sales tax license eight that a building permit is required um, prior to any permanent signs being erected Nine, a minimum of 16 off-street parking spaces meeting the requirements of Article 15 of the Zoning Ordinance shall be required for the farm experience operation in the building. Ten, retail sales of agricultural tourism products shall be in accordance with Agricultural Tourism Ordinance um, and are accessory to the farm experience operation. Eleven, food concessions shall meet the requirements of the Agricultural Tourism Ordinance and be accessory to the farm experience operation. And that 12, and that the Planning and Zoning Department reserves the right to enter and inspect the farm experience operation at any time after proper notice to the owner to ensure that the property is in full compliance with the conditional use permit conditions of approval in the zoning ordinance. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Um, I sent out notification, a letter last week to the petitioner with the staff report and the recommended conditions to the Planning Commission. Um, so they received that, and they also got notification. And the notification was sent out to everybody that's within 500 feet. Um, they brought back in their letter, so that the signed affidavit that says they mailed out the notification. So. Mr. Taylor, do you know what their interpretation of is um, petting zoo type animals? Do they have any idea? Um, what are yeah. they, I mean, I'm just curious, that's all, you know, I mean, everybody has a different interpretation of what kind of an animal can be at one of these things. Is I, I do not recall, it, it wasn't brought up to me. In, okay, in is there, it? Or... Pit bulls and penguins. Yeah. <laughs> well, quite frankly, what we normally do with this, we defer this until the petitioner's here. I, I think I'm going to make a motion to do that. I do have some other questions. So like, I mean, are they going to serve wine and beer? Is a septic system adequate for this many people? Uh, so I make a motion to defer action on this. Is there a second? 
So, I'm just kind of just, we didn't have to call for uh, deferral, um, public testimony potentially, because I, before I take You can call for public testimony. Yeah. I mean, is there anyone here who would like to speak? Because I'm just to keep our screens clean here. Okay. Any further discussion on the deferral? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those same sign. Motion is uh, approved to defer this item to the next regularly scheduled meeting. I think you might want to really encourage the applicant today to be here because I think there's several questions, right? Yeah. Okay, then we move on to uh, item number four on our regular agenda. And uh, Scott, I think you're uh, yep, that'd be presenting for the staff. Thank you, Scott Anderson, County Planner. Um, I'll give you the uh, abbreviated version of what we're doing with this, or what the request is for this. You may recall that back in August, we had a lengthy discussion about rezoning this property uh, at uh, Haystack, at, on Haystack Lane. Um, is, it, is it Haystack Lane? Haystack Place, sorry, and Renberg Street to a plan development to allow for uh, this is the property, and there's an existing barn on the property that the applicant is using to store horses on. And um, we had a, a nice discussion with the applicant when we were going through this process about bringing, somehow bringing this property into compliance with the zoning ordinance. And one of the options that we discussed was rezoning it to a planned development to allow for a residence to be constructed on this, and that was uh, that was a rec you recommended denial of this request, and it went to the county commission, and it had a public hearing, and I think it was on the second of um, the second of October, and at that meeting, the planning or the county commission, um, I think, was in agreement that the applicant should not be. A, given the opportunity to build a house on this property. However, they wanted to somehow accommodate the use of this existing barn shed that's been there for over 10 years and somehow bring it into compliance. So uh, we, sit, we, we sort of did some brainstorming in the meeting at that time, at the county commission meeting, and um, I had suggested that we could amend the plan development request to allow that accessory building really to be called the principal use of the property and bring it into compliance that way with the plan development. We would continue with the plan development down the plan development course. We would rezone it to a plan development and it would be clear that the accessory building would be the principal use, basically a barn, uh, would be allowed on the property with part of the, as part of the plan development. And that being said, the county commission referred it back to the planning commission. We have gone through all of the legal re-advertising. It's been advertised in the paper. The applicant sent out new hearing notices by certified mail. Um, the sign, I went out and changed the date on the sign to tonight's date. Um, and now we are here having a public hearing. Um, I'd be glad to answer any questions. I think you're quite familiar with with what's out there and the concept. So uh, I'd be glad to answer any questions. I, my applicants are here tonight, so uh, we can have a public hearing. I'd be glad to answer any questions that you have. Questions for Scott? I did, my only concern, Scott, was like, our number one concern was the housing eligibility, and that's fine. Uh, the second one, this doesn't affect our plan development type or set of you know, it's a little different. It is, and I think, and we had that discussion. Fine, you know, we're we're going to accomplish what needs to be accomplished, but is it the right thing to do, I guess? Well, I think it's the only option that we have if we want to bring that into compliance with the zoning ordinance, unless we're going to go through, I mean, I suppose that we could go through a, quite a long rigmarole of amending the zoning ordinance, somehow wording this, that you, you can have an accessory building with a conditional use permit. That would be one option. But I don't think that we want to go down that as a planning commission because you're going to get lots of people that are going to want to store their boats and everything else out there, buy a piece of property, and wham, I have a storage unit. And 
Um, and I think that I think that the intent of a plan development is to give you wide latitude to sort of deal with, let's call them unique situations. I think if you read it carefully, you know, a plan development is meant to deal with properties that could impede development. I mean, that's one of the one of the criteria, and and quite honestly, with it just from my preference and from a logistically how we deal with something, I really would like to somehow bring this into compliance. Um, it, it just it, 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 it's something that's just sort of hanging out there and it would be nice to you know, have a resolution to it and know that it is um, that it is being brought into compliance. Um, does it fit with the, the character of the neighborhood? I would say yes, it does. I mean, it's a large parcel of property. I don't think that the barn is, is going to detract from the neighborhood. I have written, if you would look at the, um, if you look at the permitted, uh, the permitted uses under the waterway, the waterway meadows plan development, it says that under number one permitted uses, the existing barn as the, the, well, let me, a building or premise shall be permitted to be used for the following purpose. The existing barn as principal use of the property. And then I added, any changes or additions to the existing barn will require a new final development plan to be reviewed and approved by the Minnehaha County Planning Commission, which is the way that our plan developments work. You know, typically you bring in a final development plan. We already sort of have the final development as it sits, but should someone want to add you know, a lean-to on there or somehow modify that, there is an option. They would have to come back with a, a basically a final development plan to make any changes and we would go through the uh, a hearing process again. Well, I spent the time and watched the county commission meeting and, and uh, so when it was sent back, there was also some conversation about a conditional use and making this a a stable, albeit a poorly run stable, without you know paying customers. And I, I was so glad to see the packet stay as a plan development because I think a stable could have been changed the nature of the activity going on there. So exactly, I, I, I think I, that was my concern at the meeting that I expressed. I think you're opening the door to have someone running like a rainbow stables, right. where you know in five years you right. look at it and think I could make some even yeah. more money on this property by. 20 horses and having people a riding arena and people out there <clears throat> yep. so I think for in in an in an attempt to bring this into compliance I don't see a lot of other options unless we want to go through a long drawn-out process of amending our zoning ordinance to discuss how we deal with accessory buildings and if we would allow them in some manner or not pass it leave it not or leave it non-conforming, and that's your other option. But um, you know, the applicant wants to try and bring this into compliance, and I, I applaud that attempt because it it just right or wrong, it happened in 2005, it, ten years ago. And uh, all right, any other questions for Scott? Thank you, Scott. Is the applicant here? Can you come forward, state your name, address, and tell us about your proposal. <coughs> Ken Holm, 25725 464th, Hartford. Scott said it all. Um, I'm here to answer any questions you may have on this. Any questions for the applicant? Yes. Tim, I, I know that you and Pam really were hoping to have a little bit of a better, better deal on this here. Is this going to satisfy you if, if we... Well, we just started out trying to get the barn to be Conforming. We didn't realize it was non-conforming when we sure. bought what it was conforming until we bought it. Yeah. And then it became non-conforming. Yeah. Which, Which as you look at the different laws, it gets kind of confusing as you're going through there. We you know, we did a title search search and it was everything was yeah. legal. So So if we go ahead with this, it's it's okay with you guys? Yeah, you know, that was our main concern coming in, it's just having that title non conforming taken off. Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. uh, First, let me apologize for the way that our commission meeting went. 
because it really was kind of discombobulated the way that that it went through. And it's uh, I've had people, dozens and dozens of people, yell at me about planning and zoning issues, but never have I been through a meeting that was as disjointed as the one that you guys went through. So my apologies on that, but I believe I intend to support this. Okay. Any other questions for the applicant? Thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak to this item? All right. What's your pleasure, folks? Well, I know their biggest concern is since it's not conforming, if this thing burns down, they can't build it back. That's the biggest thing, or blows down, or whatever. So, I, I, this is about the only resolution that we do have to move forward. I move for approval. Second. A motion and second to approve. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Same sign. Motion carries. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. A lot of patience. Quite an interesting process. <laughs> okay, uh, old business. Looks like an this update on uh, rezoning 1504. I wanted to give an update on rezoning 1504. Yep. The City of Del Rapids joint jurisdiction area was approved um, after a couple of county commission meeting deferrals um, because the City of Del Rapids was. It came a couple of times something like two to two. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then. The, and then last Tuesday we had the conditional use permit. There was the appeal of the applicants appealed your recommendation to deny conditional use permit 1561, which was the event center at Wildwater West. Oh, yeah. And uh, the county commission overturned your recommendation and uh, approved it. Um, Despite ferocious uh, opposition. Yes, the neighbors were out in force opposing well, that it. Were, you know, that's, I voted, you know, I, I, had, I was a high voter or whatever, and I voted that because I thought the county commission should hear that one because it's not a unique situation up there. Yes. And I would have really been disappointed if the neighbors had not shown up. You know, because yeah, they didn't show up on the, uh, when we did the previous one, changing yeah. the permitting to commercial. Uh, and they had the traditional objection that uh, signs weren't posted and the, yeah. They were trampled by uh, rogue elephants. A little late now. Yeah. I did get an interesting call on Friday. The the one of the neighbors wanted me to amend the conditions to remove the dust control. They all the none of the neighbors want the mag water. They're all afraid it's going to somehow damage their vehicles and their cars, and, and it's going to turn into potholes. The, the only thing worse than dust is no dust. And and I said I said that I couldn't do that. The, it, the planning, the county commission had made a decision, and they could appeal that to the circuit court. But typically, the circuit court throws or uh, listens to an appeal based on it was enacted incorrectly on merit. It, it wasn't that, but a condition. I, I didn't think that it would go anywhere, but they could certainly attempt to. Somebody hire testified that it would dissolve the concrete in their garages. Wow. Uh, Not so, only that, but it's going to poison the floodplain. Even um, though they're pumping their septic, it's going to. Yeah. So anyway, that that was approved. And under new business, Kevin had a baby. His wife had a baby on Thursday night. Um, oh. A little girl. Uh, what did they call it? Esther, Esther. Ann. Esther. There you go. Cool. Great. That's all. And, and on Wednesday, third. I move for dismissal so Wayne gets his meeting in in a half hour. So oh, there's the eye. There you go. Well, we're adjourned. I heard a lot of eyes. There was this one uh, trouble.